Welcome to Horror News Radio for February 27, 2023. Join us for Movie News of the Week and 13 horror movies to watch in March of 2023. All this and more coming up next. Yep, coming up next. <laughs> That's what happens when the button doesn't click. All right, I'm your host, Doc Rodden, and this is H&R, the official Gruesome Magazine Horror News Podcast. Back with me again this week are the scariest, glorious, bloodiest co-hosts on the net, and that means Dave Dreher, lead news writer at Gruesome Magazine. Dave, how are you doing, sir? Man, I had to be scary, bloody, and what's the other thing? Scary, bloody. And gory. And gory. I had to be yeah. all three because it's it just all. me this week. You got to do all it right. all, man. I'm up to the challenge. Out. I'm up to the You're challenge. For it. You're up yeah. for it. I know you are. <laughs> all right. We got an exciting uh, news uh, episode for you tonight with news and uh, movies that are coming out in March. That's always a fun thing to do is what's coming out next month. And I was able, Dave, to dig up 13 movies to recommend. Actually, there's a few more, but I stuck with 13. That's crazy. Uh, it's hard to believe. Do you, March. Do you, March. Do you 13 remember movies. when we struggle to find 13 in a year that we <laughs> Seriously, I mean there were, there we were like are. there were like there were like huge gaps between releases. Yes, yes. Know, so, yeah, this is crazy. Um and a number of them are theatrical. So that's even more impressive. All good. Uh, it's 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 been a remarkable time to be a horror fan and we continue this trend into 2023 and I'm happy about that, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but dare to, dare we say it's almost too much content? Yeah, is well, there, is there somebody, such a thing? For somebody who's trying to cover it all, it sure is, because we <laughs> never can get to everything. Uh, there is so much. Um, it's just, it is overwhelming. But that's a good thing. I think that's, yeah, that's a good, a good thing. thing. Keep it coming. Keep overwhelming us. All right. Well, before we get into news, we want to uh, encourage you to hit the subscribe and share with the button. Share with the button. Share with the friend button. Share with a button. What is that, Dave? What's share with a button? I don't know what that means. Uh, hit the like button. Oh, my gosh. Just whatever you can do to help us out. We want to reach more fans like you and help me get the the, the medical needs and help I need. Um, the prescriptions are just getting higher. It's, just, it's, it's out of hand, man. It's out of hand. Oh, my gosh. Uh, ben, wait, wait. Just uh, We took a week or two off. And now I'm totally out of whack. Oh, no, no, no. That's what happens. That's what it is. You get out of the swing. Yeah, like I wasn't out of whack before that. All right. Uh, anyway, let's get into the news. Dave, I'm excited about this because I think uh, the first news is not only a director you like, but I think a property you're going to like. Um, tell me what we're talking about, sir. Yeah, and I think we covered this briefly in another newscast. But yes, of course, uh, Eli Roth is bringing his grindhouse trailer thanksgiving to life as a full-length feature film which is great, uh, that, great. Was, that was one of the the most fun trailers in that whole grindhouse uh package that uh that they released that's been has it been like it's been like 10 years ago or it, something. it's been more than that more than that it, but yeah they had what they had machete they had um don't don't i remember don't, I remember don't. don't. and the, the ss wolf we're yeah, yeah, the Rob Zombie Rob one, Zombie yeah. one and, and then, uh, um, and then, uh, and, th and Thanksgiving, yeah, okay. Thanksgiving. It seems like there was more, I think there was more, but those are definitely the ones that stood out. Of course, Machete not only got made, but got made into a franchise. I think they made what three of those? Uh, they made at least two. Did they make yeah. three? Oh, yeah, I want to say three? they made, I want to say they made three. Yeah, um, but, uh, but, uh, this one was one of my favorites for sure. And everyone always kept saying he should make this into a feature length film. He's finally doing it. Like Eli it. Roth, of course, directing, and we've been getting, uh, uh, drips and drabs of, uh, of casting news all throughout the week. Actually, uh, the first big, big announcement was that, uh, Patrick Dempsey, uh, had been brought on board. I don't really know his part yet. I want to know who's playing the Pilgrim. I don't think it's going to be uh, Mr. Dempsey. Gonna be Dempsey? Yeah. I don't think it's going to be Mr. Dempsey. But uh, of course, you know, from Grey's Anatomy, uh, guy's been around for a long time. Good actor. Uh, oh, by the way, it says 16 years ago was when the Grindhouse trailer originally came out. 16, 16 years ago. Years ago. Oh my gosh. 
that is just insanity. It really truly is. I remember um, so excited, being so excited about seeing that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but after we heard about Patrick Dempsey, we also caught wind that Addison Ray uh, has been tapped for a lead role. Again, hasn't really said what or who she will be playing, but there were plenty of scantily clad women bouncing on trampolines in the trailer. So uh, uh, I'm not sure where she, Addison will be playing in the things, but she is on board. And then the latest little bit of news was that Jalen Thomas Brooks, who apparently uh, has things going on with Disney plus and uh, is on a, a couple CW shows. Uh, I don't recognize the young man, but uh, regardless, he will also be in thanksgiving so uh they're they're filling that up again like i said the uh other than the pilgrim in the trailer there really weren't any defined characters uh per se so it'll be interesting to see uh how he develops the story around this yeah we need a good old-fashioned just straight up slasher i mean we're going to get one next this month we'll talk about that in a second but um but yeah, more, more, more. We need more. We need some more. And and Roth hasn't done a lot of horror of late. Uh, you know, I mean, he was kind of he kind of backed off it after his, uh, uh, you know, his little stint of uh, torture porn movies. There, he kind of <laughs> went into acting. There, he was in uh, what was that movie he was in with uh, the Tarantino movie? Oh my god, he, with uh, why can't I remember the name of it? It is totally eluding me, Doc. It is. It's totally but, uh, the, 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 Quentin, the Quentin Tarantino movie where he he uh, the Nazi hunters. I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, he was he was in he that was a, with Brad Pitt. He was the bear Jew, right? He was the bear Jew. Yeah, it was a great movie, and he was great in it. Uh, did some smaller stuff, but it's uh, kind of cool to see him back behind the camera. So we'll see what he brings us. It is. It is. All right. Well, I've got some news for you. You know, one of my favorite movies of all time is The Exorcist. Oh, and no, it's always, it's always one that they've said you never should remake. And of course, they um, are. They are. Uh, <laughs> they did have a TV series that came out recently, and that was actually pretty good. And it kind of carried on the show a little bit. But this is or the movie. But uh, this is a a reboot um of it uh of course it had recently shut down over the winter uh around christmas time during you know one of the stars got covid and they had to shut down so, well they, they was, were possessed by a yes demon. well on. that might that might have been true too <laughs> uh but now they are filming once again and all kinds of additional casting news is coming out and it is crazy who we are getting um and we'll just start off with the name here and this is this was a huge surprise she surprised me is that Jennifer Nettles from Sugarland, <laughs> the, the country singer, is going to be in it. Uh, now, I, I hadn't realized she had done so many acting um, parts in, in, in here recently. She was um, she did, she was in the movie The Musical Waitress, sorry, uh, Righteous Gemstones on HBO, and she was in the Harriet Tubman biopic Harriet. She had a role in that. And then she's also doing been doing a judge on uh, the big go big show on TBS and uh, the farmer wants a wife on Fox. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, uh, and she made her Broadway debut in 2015 as Roxy Hart in Chicago. So there you go. But well, the she... fact... go ahead. I'm sorry, Doc. I was going to say about the fact that she's going to be in the Exorcist movies, the trilogy is is crazy. It's just, it's literally crazy, if you ask me. Um, she's joining Leslie and uh, Leslie Odom Jr. and Dowd. Ellen Bernstein is reprising her role as Chris McNeil. Um, so that's that's all fascinating. Um, and we did get some additional cast. We got um, uh, Raphael uh, Sabarge, who's an actor I don't recognize, but is going to be playing a another uh, priest uh, in the movie or a priest in the movie. Um, which is coming October 13th. Uh, what else, what has he been in? Let's see if I can figure that out here real quick. Um, he was in Gaslit. He was in Once Upon a Time. Um, Murder in the First. Law and Order. Of course, yeah, everybody's in Law and Order at some point, but <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then we got a pair of young actors. Um, uh, Lydia Jewett 
is set to uh, join and she was in let's see she was in she's been in a whole bunch of stuff like hidden figures black panther darkest minds um she's appeared in good girls Grey's anatomy bunked other series so she's for a young actress who looks to be maybe 10 <laughs> maybe 12 i don't know she looked young has had quite a quite a string of um appearances already uh, another actress is um Olivia Markham is going to be joining. Um, she she did uh, Matilda and Matilda the musical. A very eclectic cast. Yeah. So what do you what do you think? I mean, to me, the big surprise is Jennifer Nels, but you know, oh, for regardless. Sure. Yeah, for sure. That, that goes without saying. I I don't think you mentioned that this is coming to us from Bloomhouse and uh, David Gordon Green, who of course just yep. did the uh, Halloween, the new Halloween trilogy. Uh, it's got some people concerned, not a lot of people fans of that particular trilogy. Uh, I think he's a capable filmmaker. Uh, again, I'm just not sure why The Exorcist. Uh, I Like you, Doc, I was very shocked on how good the TV series was. So uh, hopefully they're, I don't, know, I don't know what they're doing here. It seems like it's going to be another one of these uh, reimagining type things. So oh, it's it's definitely... Bernstein's back in. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're going to try to tie it in somehow to what happened to Reagan. Uh, but uh, so hopefully they don't try to remake it as much as attempt to continue it. No, I, I think it's very much going to be kind of like Halloween was to Halloween, right? Yeah. Over, I think it's definitely going to be one of those uh, legacy sequels, if you will. That's um, it, legacy sequel. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I would be surprised if Ellen Bernstein's in much of the trilogy. I would. I was. Yeah, probably the first one, huh? Yep. Uh, yeah. But I, you know, I'm a sucker. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to everything until I know it's bad. Um, and, <laughs> I've, and, then, I've, and even then, you still love it. So that's okay. Uh, that's true. But I I there there are a few horror films that are kind of like you know make you kind of cringe if they're going to remake it. This is one of them. Jaws is another. I would imagine yeah. people would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be yeah, we'll see. October. I, I struggle with possession films. We've had these. We've had these mm. comments many times before. Uh, they just unnerve me, which I, you know, you would think would be a good thing, but they unnerve me to the point that I sometimes get uncomfortable watching them. Do so, you? Uh, Do you? Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. We'll we'll see. We'll see. I'm 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 a buckle in. We'll see where it goes. Buckle and say yeah. You, well, <laughs> you, you know, it's also Blumhouse and. So you're probably saying, um, all right, well, we'll see. We'll find out in October. Uh, you, sir, are a Stephen King fan, are you not? It's been rumored that, that is, in fact, a case, yes. And are you a fan <laughs> of his book and the movies, It? I am, and, and all their different uh, all their different uh, versions. <laughs> There's been, what, three you know, different arcane uh, uh, Incarnations. In okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. Incantations. Exactly. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we're, we're back to the possession stuff again. Um, but yeah, of course, the uh, the latest, uh, you know, the two films, it and it chapter two, which were here just out in the last couple of years, were were huge hits uh, for Warner you know, Brothers. Excellent, excellent films. Yeah, man. yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and this has been kind of rumored for a bit here. It just finally got confirmed that uh, HBO Max is indeed. Green lighting. Welcome to Derry, which will be a prequel to the two It films, the 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 last two, not the Tim Curry one, not the mini series. Um, they gave it a direct to series order, which means they wanted production started three days ago. <laughs> so, so they're really gearing up. Uh, Andy and Barbara Machete, uh, who of course were behind the films, uh, are behind this as well. Uh, Andy Machete will direct multiple episodes, including the pilot episode. Um, so uh, we don't have any story ideas yet, other than the fact that it is a prequel. A prequel. A prequel. I, don't know what, I don't know what a prequel, a prequel is. A prequel. <laughs> uh, I, I read somewhere, but was not able to confirm it, that uh, Skarsgård uh, was in fact being pursued to once again uh, reprise his roles Pennywise. Uh, but again, that it's never been confirmed. A, a lot of these sites like to just uh, kind of state things and then hope they become true. <laughs> okay. So 
I hope he's I, part of it too, because that would be that'd be awesome. Yeah, it, it would it would be quite great. Uh, Stephen King uh, released a little statement where he said uh, he's excited for the story of Derry, Maine's most haunted city, to continue, and he's glad that Andy and his sister Barbara are along for the ride. Red balloons all around. Stop. Red balloons all around. All around. Yes. So uh, hopefully this moves, like I said, they are really hot on this one. Hopefully it gets geared up quickly. I don't, I, is it possible we could see it by, by the uh, hot season this year? I, well, it's possible, I, I suppose. I don't know. I, again, nothing, nothing's been mentioned. I'm just curious as to how quickly they'll try to do it. I would say for sure by next year, hot season easily. Yeah. So, so the, yes, the rumor is very much is, is that yeah, you know, Bill Skarsgård will, will will play, but I think I like you said I think it is just a rumor. Nobody really knows. It, it is it, it, it it's it's conjecture at this point, um, and uh, you know we'll wait and see. But it would make perfect sense. Yeah, oh, no. I mean really, I, I imagine it'll come down to contract negotiations. How much they're gonna have to pay him to get in that goddamn makeup every week? Mm. <laughs> well, he's not gonna. He can't be in it. Well, I mean he. Yeah, if it's a prequel, much, right? we're probably gonna. Yeah, if it's a prequel, we're because I mean we got a little bit of a of a prequel story in it chapter two, not much of right. it, but we did get a little uh, a little piece of it. So I'm assuming they're gonna build on that. You know, we'll see. I mean, they kind of did it with That's Castle right. Rock, right? I mean, Castle Rock was able to they give did. us kind of some inroads into into Stephen King's universe. So this will be fun. I'm looking. I'm looking very very forward to it. I think each HBO Max will do it well. Well, they've handled the property very well, and the machetes have along with it. And if they, if they're involved, and he's directing episodes, I would imagine if Bill's going to be in it, that he's going to be in the episodes that she's going to be, and he's going to be uh, directing. Wouldn't you think? Uh, I would agree. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of come, yeah. kind of probably come in a package. But all right, so you know, there's more than one Exorcist movie in our news uh, this week, Dave. Yes, uh, I know. The other one is a trailer for The Pope's Exorcist. Now, The Pope's Exorcist, of course, was uh, a film that we've been looking forward to, uh, but had not seen anything until this week about it. Um, it, of course, is... Uh, it, 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 how, how do we want to say it? Let's just put this put the little, little, little image up here. Coming out April 7th, it's directed by Julius Avery, who... Um, is a very talented director. We like his previous works, which I am uh, stalling as I get it up. Is Overlord? <laughs> Overlord, do you remember? We like that. Yeah, Overlord, Overlord was great, actually. Right. And he also directed Samaritan. I don't know if you watched. Samaritan. I love Samaritan. Yes, <laughs> so Mister <laughs> Stallone, that was great. Yeah, and then he's following up with this, and of course, it's following um, the uh, whoops. Uh, it's following real life figure Father Gabriel Amorth who uh, is the inspiration for the exorcist itself um, with, and uh, I mean, we even had a documentary from, was it William Blatty that did yeah. it? Or was it uh, a, William, uh, William Freakin, I believe. Freakin did it. Yeah. I, yeah. I forgot which one was involved, but, and we, we read that here on the site as well. And that was really interesting. Although yeah, when it got down to the nitty gritty, they, they punted and that was kind of, upsetting but russell crowe is on board as you can see um as the title character franco nero is the pope um also in the title uh ralph innocent uh who has that deep booming voice you remember him from the the witch he was the dad yep in the witch your fit one of your favorite films uh, uh, <laughs> uh but anyway you can't you you obviously you recognize the voice and he's going to be of course the voice of the uh the demon. The demon. And what did and you it, think? What did you think of the it, trailer? It's a disturbing ass trailer. I I would say it was a disturbing trailer. Uh, it looks really good. Very long trailer. I was surprised that, uh, uh, you know, it was like oh, what two and a half minute runtime. Mm -hmm. So they're giving us a lot of the story, and there's some really really uh, spooky imagery in it. So it looks fantastic. It looks like it's uh, top top notch. Yeah, Alex Esso is also in it, and who we are a fan of. Are we not? We are indeed. When does this come out? This comes out. Let me pull it up again. It's right here. April 7th. Oh, boy, it's going to be here before we know it. Yes. 
Yeah, that's, that's coming out quick. Uh, yeah, just in time for Easter, which somehow seems totally I know. wrong. I know. Well, it's got the Pope in it, so it was, I, guess, I don't know. It was, it was the wrong. Wouldn't that be funny if you didn't realize what it was and you were going in there thinking you were going to get a nice Easter movie? And <laughs> a nice Easter movie, and you come yeah, out yeah, was, scarred for life. Uh, I'll tell you, but uh, no, it looks. It does. It, it it looks very very good. I'm already stealing myself to be able to go see it. <laughs> All right. Well, there's the horror news of the week. Uh, there's there was a, an abundance of it. Uh, news is coming fast and furious. Uh, and Fast and Furious is in the news. A <laughs> um, couple Exorcist movies tonight. Welcome to Derry. And uh, well, Thanksgiving. 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 We cover all the holidays. We do. It's amazing. Um, just get them all in there. If we talked about Leprechaun, we'd have St. Patrick's Day. We'd do it. We'd do it. <laughs> all right. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like, subscribe button, share with a friend. To help us find more people like you. But Dave, let's get into our recommendations. Are you ready for this? This is going to be yeah. Let's rattle these babies uh, off. A freaking blast. Um, I'm going to do them in the order they're coming out, at least at the time we're recording. Uh, starting with the spoonful of sugar, which is going to shudder on uh, the second of March. So very soon after you're listening to this, uh, the synopsis is Mil uh, Millicent is taking a semester off from her studies to concentrate on her thesis about children with severe allergies, which makes her the perfect person to take care of little Johnny, a sickly mute child who suffers from every allergy under the sun, from nickel to artificial fabric. His overbearing mother, Rebecca, is an accomplished author who has focused her latest uh, book release, who is focused on her latest book release, I should say. While his dissatisfied father, Jacob, spends sweaty, shirtless days toiling away on the carpentry project in the backyard. That is a horrible what, what synopsis. Is, that synopsis that is, is a horrible fucking that's synopsis. A, that's a piece of crap synopsis. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's something in there that should have been said that wasn't. Uh, I should have read that before. I would have just thrown that away. Uh, the director is Mercedes Price Morgan. Uh, it's written by Leah St. Marie, who I bet had nothing to do with the synopsis. And the not. cast was uh, Morgan Saylor, Cat Foster, and uh, Michael Olivier. So well, I, I like the poster, although I don't understand what the person in the spacesuit helmet is. I'm assuming that must be some kind of biohazard suit. Maybe. Uh, Maybe. If this kid is so allergic. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the synopsis is puzzling. I'm not quite sure what the hell that's all about. Yep. And that sugar looks a little like blood. Just a little bit. A little bit like yeah, yeah, I have to agree with you a little bit. But uh, you know, it's a it's a shutter film. So look for our review on Gruesome Magazine. We'll and I think it's already in our it's already in our viewing uh, uh, queue, is it not, Doc? I believe it I is. I think it is. I think we'll be yeah. uh personally, you and I will be talking about it here in just a couple of days. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched it yet, but I will be soon. all right. Up next is the park. Uh this one looks like fun because we always love theme parks, especially when they're abandoned. Uh, a virus kills all of Earth's adults. That's always a good start. Uh, rival children battle for control of an abandoned theme park. Children of the park? Children of the park. <laughs> uh, written and directed by Shao Ngo. I don't know, Ingo? Ingo? I'm going to say it's Ingo. The cast includes Carly McIntyre, uh, Laura Coover, and Billy Slaughter. Gotta love that name, Billy Slaughter. Nice. There you go. And this is from XYZ Films. So look it on, look for it on VOD on the second of March. Yes. <laughs> if you make me, I will. <laughs> Up next, I like this poster. It's, there's something about this that appeals to me. The sound of silence. Uh, this is also from XYZ Films. Uh, and it comes out the 3rd of March, the next day. I don't know why it comes out the next day. One, I guess once a Thursday, once a Friday. So man, you, you work it out. Uh, <laughs> the synopsis is Emma must uncover a dark secret behind the cursed radio to survive and protect her family. Uh, written and directed by Alessandro Antonasi, Daniel Lascar, Stefano Mandala, and T3. Huh? <laughs> what? Uh, I, I, what? <laughs> uh, the cast includes uh, Lucia Caparasso, uh, Chiara Casolaro, Casolari, excuse me, and Danielle De Martino. So, and T4. 
And T and T four. <laughs> Stop. Uh, I liked I liked the, I liked the idea that you know there's a haunted radio. Yeah, I I, 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 I like the poster. I can't believe they didn't go with the tagline "Hello Darkness." My I know it's, it's right there, right there to be I mean, had. There, there it is. But uh, looks looks interesting. All right. Also on the third, everything's front loaded here. Also on the third is Hunter Kill Her, which is a play on Hunter Killer, <laughs> obviously, uh, from a new company called Welcome Villain, um, uh, and it's a, sl a slasher film, of course. Yeah. Sure looks like it. Uh, and uh, the synopsis is, on an otherwise beautiful evening, uh, during her first night on the job, a lone night shift janitor finds herself in an unexpected fight for survival when she becomes a target of the sinister masked intruders. As their disturbing motives become clearer, she must use her crafty instincts and barbaric violence to make it through the night alive. Yes, <laughs> you, you know, as humans, we're not given enough uh, enough opportunity to use our barbaric violence. barbaric violence. Yes, yeah, yeah, so uh, directed by Craig Swinson and Ryan Thiessen, uh written by Greg Swinson. Uh, the cast includes Natalie Terrazino, J.C. Oakley the Third, and Larry Bunton. What do you think of that mask? I, I like the mask. I like the fact that it's a slasher movie. I haven't seen a trailer or anything for this, so that would really kind of tell the tale for me. But on the face value. I'm saying I'm I'm excited to see this one. I can't wait to see what it's all about. All right, up next is one I think many people here are curious about, and that is the 2023 remake of Children of the Corn, written and directed by Kurt Wimmer. The cast includes Elena Campuris, uh, Campuris maybe, uh, Kate Moyer, uh, Callan Mulvey, and Bruce Spence. I mispronounced two out of four names. Uh, <laughs> the synopsis is if the film describes the events leading up to and including the massacre of all the adults of a small town in Nebraska by their children after the adults irresponsibly ruin the crops and the children's future. Yeah, we've actually already reviewed this one. The review's up on the site. Look, you can see it right there, Doc. It's yes. on the screen of my yes. computer. There you go. Uh, yeah, there it is. Look, right there it is. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I I believe, and I think you did too, uh, on our reviews, Doc. Although they'll have to listen to make sure, mind you. But I think we both uh, we both recommended checking this one out. We found it entertaining. It's flawed by by for certain. <laughs> but it's still a lot of fun, or at least we thought so. I don't think everybody agreed on it. Uh, but yeah. what you need to do, though, is check out the review and see what you think of it. Yep, it's right there, right in the middle of the site. You can't miss it. Go to gruesomemagazine.com. <laughs> Boom, there it is. All right, you want to keep going? Keep going? Yeah, Yeah. let's go. Got to keep going. This next one is going to be on Paramount+. Plus, and it's called Unseen, uh, one of the many uh, films that Blumhouse has been uh, made. You know, uh, they kind of whatever to <laughs> make a bunch of films for paramount they have a bunch of films for epics or whatever it's called now mgm plus yeah uh, i mean blumhouse knows what they're doing they know how to handle these low budget films these low budget they know the formula and they're doing an incredible job so i you know me what does crystal call me uh blum humper blum humper so i'm gonna watch this blumhouse film all right here we go sam receives a call from emily a nearly blind woman who is running from her murderous ex in the woods. <laughs> ah, okay, sorry. She must survive the ordeal with Sam being her eyes using video call. Oh, that's fascinating. It's an interesting premise. The trailer is good. We got the trailer up on the site, and it's actually a, a, an interesting trailer. The, the premise is, uh, again, kind of flawed, but at the same time, kind of cool. I the the idea is interesting. The idea is very interesting. Uh, directed by Yoko Akamura. Uh, the writers are Salvador Cardoni and Brian Rawlings. The cast includes Misty Pyle, <laughs> uh, Midori Francis, and Jolene Purdy. I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. I ain't going to lie. I'm, I'm curious about this one. I am too. I am too. All right. The biggie is up next. This is probably... Even though we have a dinosaur movie still waiting and maybe a little <laughs> leprechaun movie coming up, um, Scream 6, of course, is the one we all want to see. Uh, we, I think you and I are both fans of Scream 5. Yeah. Even though one called Scream 5 that came out. Yeah, the one, yeah, yeah. The, uh, again, the legacy sequel, if you will. 
which was handled extraordinarily well. Especially. It was. And these are the same directors and writers, which yes. is bo boding well. And the same additional cast is coming back with more people coming back and new cast members coming forward. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, and it's going to be in 3D. Did you notice it was going to be in 3D? Yeah, I've seen that. Um, this is yeah. coming to theaters on the 10th of March. Uh, the synopsis is simple. Uh, in the next installment, the survivors of ghost face killings leave Woodsboro behind and start a fresh chapter in New York City. New York City. <laughs> New <laughs> York City. I think I think it'd be great if they had uh, Jason walk by and and knock that boombox out of the dude's hand while the or his head. That thing. Wouldn't his that head be off. fun? Yeah. <laughs> I always remember that. That'd, be, that'd be a that'd be a cool that'd be a cool callback. I don't know. Maybe. Um, <laughs> it is uh, directed by Matt Bertini Open and Tyler uh, Gillett or Gillett. Uh, written by James Vanderbilt and Guy Busick, based on characters, of course, by Kevin Williamson. And the cast includes uh, Melissa Barrera, Courtney Cox, Jenna Ortega, Jasmine Savoy Brown, Mason Gooding, Hayden Pentier is um, making her way back. Samara Weaving is joining. We love Samara Weaving. And Dermot Maroney. Yeah, interesting cast. You know, I mean, you know, uh, the only legacy one back is really Courtney Cox. Is uh, is Hayden Panettiere? Is she playing the same? Yeah, she is. is she she's got... playing. She was okay, a character she... in four. Yeah. Yeah, she was character in four. So they have two two legacy people back, but uh, of course they killed off. Um, I don't think it's a spoiler for anyone. They killed off Dewey in the uh, in the legacy, <laughs> and and they they couldn't talk uh, Sydney into coming back for this one. So she's still out there floating around somewhere. So uh, she is safe and sound, <laughs> safe and sound. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it'd be interesting to see if Courtney Cox makes it through this, through this uh, thing. And I haven't seen Samara weaving in any of the trailers, unless I've just missed her. Uh, so I'm no, I haven't, I haven't seen her yet either. I've seen Dermot Mulroney. Yeah, kind of curious to see um, where she fits into this whole thing. Yeah, uh, it will be interesting. It will be, and it's a little strange what they're doing now. Kirby Reed was Hayden uh, Penetier's character's name. Kirby. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Okay, so oh, also Tony Revolori is in it. He's um, uh, Flash Thompson from the Spider-Man films. From uh, that means uh, nothing to me. Nothing. Okay. Some people out there know <laughs> what I'm talking. Uh, it'd be okay. So there's this crazy thing where he disappears when the shotgun tries to shoot him in the trailer. The guy with the shotgun goes to shoot him and he just vanishes. Did you see that? I did see that, but what, what does is that, that mean? all about? And because he always goes, I'm something because he goes, I'm something different. So I'm I'm really curious about what this something different is. I guess we all are, right? Wormholes. Wormholes. Time trap. Wormholes would be different, sir. All right. <laughs> uh up next is the dinosaur film I was alluding to earlier. Uh this is featuring Adam Driver, Ariana Greenblatt, and Chloe Coleman. Uh, written and directed by Scott Beck and Brian Woods. Scott Beck and Brian Woods are behind the uh, Quiet Place films. They're the writers of that and creators. Uh, the synopsis, an astronaut crash lands on a mysterious planet only to discover he's not alone. And I think the trailer gives a lot away about what that means. <laughs> yeah. I, get, um, I get like Planet of the Ape vibes off this for some reason. It, I it, I, it does feel like Planet of the Apes because I yeah. don't know if they're supposed to be humans going back in time or if they're other world people visiting earth for the first time 65 million years ago so i guess we'll find out right yeah because because uh, the the even the tagline is millions millions of years ago prehistoric earth had a visitor i know so, so i guess that kind of tells us right <laughs> yeah, kinda... um, but the trailer looks fantastic and it looks it good to... yeah production production value looks great and of course adam driver yeah I don't think he knows how to make a bad movie. So uh, you might find people that say he does, but he's always good <laughs> in them, regardless. Yeah, he doesn't. All right, uh, there you go. March tenth uh, as well. Um, that'll be a crazy weekend for us all. Uh, the next film I'm looking forward to. This is called The Lake. Um, <laughs> it's it's going to have a, a, it's a great post. It, it, it is always is. It's going to have a limited theatrical release on the tenth as well. Um, it is uh, directed by Lee Thongham and uh, Aqueen Zhu, X, X U, however, Chu, Chu, I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, written by Lee <laughs> Thongham. Uh, the cast includes Shakrit Boon, Boon Kao. Oh, geez. 
Nayana <laughs> Bumi and Wan Mai Chatbarak. I I have hey, butchered hey, you know what? so many names tonight. But, uh, I, I, I'm sure I, I'm sure that's nowhere near correct, but it is phonically correct as I'm looking at you as I'm looking even, at the words on the paper. I'm, I'm not even sure it's phonically correct, but it is. <laughs> um, uh, but it, uh, what I hear is it's got some practical effects in it too. Practical yeah, monster. Yeah, uh, the po the poster's killer. So I I'd, I'd go see it just based on the poster alone. Yep, and the trailer's out there, so check it out. I'm looking forward to it. All right, the tenth has one more film for us. Four films, one day. What in the world? All right. Unwelcome. Now, this is a movie that we've talked about for about a year now. It keeps getting dates and getting moved and, and dates and getting moved. And I'm not 100% convinced it's going to come out on the 10th, but it's it's on the list now. So if it does, we're going to talk about it here. Uh, it's written. It's directed by John Wright, uh, written by Mark Stay and John Wright. The cast includes Hannah John Kamen, Douglas Booth, and Colm Meany. Uh, the synopsis, a uh, married couple, Maya and Jamie, escape their urban nightmare to a tranquility of a rural Ireland, only to discover malevolent and murderous goblins lurking in the gnarled ancient wood at the feet of their new garden. So it's lawn gnomes is what you're telling me. That's, uh, what, I'm That's what I'm hearing. Somewhere between gnomes and leprechauns. Um, but it's Irish. Irish, and they're unwelcome. Unwelcome. Uh, the trailer looks fantastic. There is a trailer it, been out there for a while, so yeah, it, it looks the poster makes it look like a like a Netflix movie. It, it it well, it almost looks like like a bad moon movie. <laughs> 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 uh, but I'm looking forward to it. Go see. I want to let's look up who John Wright because John Wright's name sounds familiar to me, and I'm I, I feel bad. That and I now can, you're curious, huh? No, I can't. And I, can't remember. Makes me feel bad. Oh, he did Grabbers. Do you remember Grabbers? Oh, I remember Grabbers. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Absolutely remember Grabbers. So he he definitely can handle horror and humor. So and then also with an Irish tone to it. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm right. looking forward to it. All right. Up next is a movie called Leave. This is coming to Shutter. On the 27th of March, the synopsis, a young woman tries to find her origins after having been abandoned as an infant at the cemetery, wrath and cloth with satanic symbols. This is never good. Um, but as she gets closer to answers, a malevolent spirit is telling her to leave. Listen, leave. <laughs> I have to tell you right now, <laughs> you should leave. Um, Get the hell out. Director is Alex Heron. The writer is Thomas Maltstadt. The cast includes Alicia von Rittberg, Herman Tomaras, and Stig R. Amdam. Or Amdam. I would say it's Amdam instead of Amdam. I agree. It might not be. It might be Amda. It might, it might be. Some, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, whenever you're looking into your past and you found you were found wrapped in cloth with satanics don't do it don't do it leave it alone it's, that's one of those things that your adoptive parents just don't need to don't, tell you you don't you don't want to find them you don't, <laughs> don't want them finding you <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are you looking forward to that at all i actually this is the first i heard of it doc so i'm not going to lie to you but it sounds like it's right up our alley and it's coming to shutter so we'll definitely be watching it we'll be covering it we'll be covering it um that is for certain all right, you got a hint of what the next one was. This is called Endsman from Neon. And I saw a trailer for this in front of a, one of the movies I saw recently. And it was, it's it's one of those um, A24 type films, Dave, that you love so much. Um, it, I it has, I it has, a, <laughs> has, has a, uh, a Wicker Man feel to it, if you will. Um, Written and directed by Mark Jenkin. Uh, the cast includes Mary Woodbine, Edward Rowe, and Flo Crow. How do you like that name, Flo Crow? But dang, I like that. <laughs> um, set in 1973 on an uninhabited island off the Cornish coast, a wildlife volunteer's daily observations of rare flower turn into a metaphysical journey that forces her, as well as the viewer, in, <laughs> to question what is real and what is nightmare. So it's skin a rink on a rock, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> there's, a, there's a song in there somewhere. 
Um, uh, all right. Well, um, I, I'm I'm already not looking forward to. You're no, yeah, yeah. I, I can't imagine <laughs> that would be. But we'll be talking about it. it's from Neon. Oh yeah. Well, um, we'll we have we'll, to talk. We have to we'll talk about it. it. It's on our yeah. list. We'll be doing it. All right. Up next is another film on Shutter, and of course, if it's on Shutter, we'll be covering it. Uh, it's called The Unheard. And now you've heard. <laughs> it's uh, directed by Jeffrey A. Brown. Uh, writers are Michael Rasmussen and Sean Rasmussen. Have we heard those names before? I feel like we, we have. have. Yeah, the Rasmussen, Rasmussen brothers have uh, actually, weather as writers, are very, uh, very active in the horror genre. The cast includes Lachlan Watson, Michelle Hicks, and Nick uh, Sandow. There is no synopsis at the moment, so I do not know what to tell you this movie is about, other than it's about something that is unheard. Or the person's unheard. Ooh. It's, it's, it's got kind of a spacey thing going on there. I'm not sure what's going on with the, the, the dude there. It looks like he's lost in a TV set or something. I'm not really sure what's going on there. <laughs> might be. He might be. Might be underwater. Kind of hard to tell. But Rasmussen's are are, are 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 talented horror writers. They really are. Uh, yes, they um, they we've done a number of their films. Uh, the Ward. I remember us talk. Didn't we talk to them? Did we interview them? We interviewed them for The Ward, didn't we? I I think we did interview them I for The Ward. We did. Uh, Dark Feed, The Inhabitants, and Crawl were their past um, films. They yeah, did, so. Crawl was real good. We enjoyed Crawl immensely. I, we yeah. liked The Ward. We liked The Ward a lot as well. We did. Good. Yep. But uh, we do not know the plot of the unheard, but we will find out on the 31st of March. This is yes, the last will. film. Of so you know month. what? That's a pretty strong, a pretty strong lineup. I, I would say honestly, of of those 13 movies, there's maybe only two uh, for me personally. Maybe two that I would say don't really interest me. Uh, that's pretty good. I wonder if some of the ones I passed on you would be more interested in. I bet you would. I know your taste. Um, <laughs> I, of course, there are some standouts. The, you know, Scream Six, I think, is on every. Sure, of course, that that's a given, right? And of course, we love our our Shutter films. So, a Spoonful of Sugar and Leave and Unheard. Looking forward to those. Um, we've already seen Children of the Corn. Yeah. Um, Anything with the dinosaurs. The dinosaur one looks great, watch, and of course, yeah. uh, any any kaiju film. I'm game, no matter how good or bad it is. I'll watch it. And I've seen some bad ones. Holy <laughs> cow! Have I seen some bad ones? Holy mackerel! Holy mackerel! All right. Well, which one of these thirteen films in March are you most looking forward to? Leave us Ooh. some comments in the, uh, in the comments. What do you section think? What do you think, Doc? What will they say? It, it, I'm going to say it, Scream Six is going to be the big winner. It's going to be the big winner. Scream Six, yes. Yeah. All right, and uh, we have some feedback. So this is an example of what could happen if you leave us feedback. We might read it on the show, like we are going to do right now. Chad White says about our our last episode where we have um, uh, recommending a, a number of films in in February. Uh, awesome show, everyone. Thanks for compiling these upcoming movies. There's a lot to look forward to. I love twist movies, so I'm hoping M Night Shyamalan can bring the magic. I think he kind of did. Uh, by the way, no worries, Crystal, he says. Uh, both Possession and Possessor were awesome. Remember, because we were talking about mixing those two movies up? Yes, we were. Uh, thanks for the recommendation uh, on both. Uh, and he says, I really appreciate hey, he really appreciate the English. That I, can <laughs> I really appreciate all the hard work you do for the show, he says. And uh, it was easy for him to say it because it was hard for me. <laughs> uh, but, Chad White, we thank you very much. Thank you, Chad. Nice to know uh, we're appreciated, Doc. It is. All right. Well, I think that's our cue to get out of here. Dave, thank you for joining me. This was so much fun. Always a pleasure, Doc. Look forward to it. We don't we don't get these times just you and I together very no. much anymore. We've always got all these other people here. We might have to do something about that. <laughs> all right. Let's let's say good night. Good night.